So you pull it out here. This is interesting because look, it's gonna, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's not good. So I actually can't show you that one. Um, that was bad design or bad planning, I guess. Here, let's do this one. Pull this out. There it is. All right, everyone, we're here at the Mercedes-Benz High Power Charging Network with some Alpitronic units. Again, these are the HYC 400. We've seen these at IANA. We've seen these at BP POS with the Travel Centers of America, and they are absolutely awesome. You can see here they have Pater. Everything's well labeled. They have their own um, a screen they chose to put here, which looks really nice to show you all your options. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug in. I've done this many times here with um, these Alpitronic units, but this time I'm actually at a reasonable state of charge where I should see um, max speeds. These are, again, those 400 amp cables, uh, but you saw I, I was able to easily do that uh, one-handed. And they are the 400 amp. I assume they'll go up to 600 with the boost. We're gonna find out here in a second because uh, the Equinox should show us that. So it says plug in first, then we come over here, they do a, um, a $50 hold, which is, again, a lot. Um, I think Ayana was 75 or something like that. The best I've seen was the $35, um, the $35 hold for travel centers. Authorizing, authorizing. With, this is with the pater. You can also slide, I didn't see that, but I put the chip in, taking a bit here to authorize. Thank you, approved. All right, please remove card. Hopefully it should. Please select a charging port. So here, I'm actually on port five, so I'll, I'll select port five. It says, please unplug. Interesting, so let me unplug and replug in, or maybe um, I'll select now, select port five. Sorry about this terrible camera work. All right, now I'm gonna plug in. Uh, there we go, I hadn't put my wallet away. <laughs> so that's interesting, it tells you except, it's weird, oh, that um, clicked right away. It's weird that it would tell you to plug in first and then when I did, it said it wasn't available. So that was interesting. So see, it says, plug in first, pay second. So that didn't work out for me. Initializing, ready, preparing, power delivery. And click. There we go, and we're ramping up, we're charging. So we should expect to see 150, maybe for a second. I did make sure I, warm, I warmed up the battery this time. Maybe only 128. We'll see. Yep. Shoot up to 500 amps. Awesome. Here, I'll quick sh show everybody these details here. 153 kilowatts. I think they have the Mercedes Benz. Actually, look, they're kind of like pixelated. That's a choice. Um, you know what's interesting? Uh, I actually don't see amps and volts at all on this screen. So they chose to not display that to the customer, I guess. Uh, here we go, charging detail, excuse me, kilowatts, average kilowatt, state of charge. So pretty typical here. This was 50 cents a kilowatt hour, which isn't bad. And um, this is a little bit of a ritzy area. So I'm sure most people aren't gonna care about that. Let's go to um, cost detail, Let's see what that says. And just shows your your cost as it adds up. So there it is, working nicely. Um, it did take a pretty long time to activate as compared to the, um, the units at Travel Centers of America, but it's working, I'm charging 153 kilowatts, cannot complain. All right, everybody, so I wanna give you a little site tour here. We have six hyperchargers, HYC 400s, as you can see there. And it's kind of interesting um, so they have two handles and they have a CCS and they have a NAX. These are Amphenol, like I said, the 400 amps. This says they're rated to 380. I don't know much about the NAX connector, but it's pretty beefy. Kind of looks like the, um, 
the version 4 uh, NAX handles a little bit uh, with the really nice cable management system. Let me show everybody that. Let me put my coffee down. Uh, see, I pull it out here. This is interesting because look, it's going <laughs> to... That's, uh, yeah, that's not good. So I actually can't show you that one. Um, that was bad design or bad planning, I guess. Here, let's do this one. Pull this out. There it is. Nice long stretch and reach. Um, but do you know what I'm noticing, everybody? Uh, this is interesting. Is this not... Yeah, okay, so these might be the handicap accessible units because this is interesting. So you see it has a two and that uh, this one actually isn't labeled. And when you click here, instructions, pricing, let's, let me, let's do credit card, let's see. Let me see if it only has one, you can only choose one. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm not positive, but I think you can only use one handle here at a time, which is uh, fascinating because if, if you look, this is why I bring it up. This is centered in a stall and then this is centered in a stall and then these have two. So that must be the layout. So technically um, it is only 10 charging handles available for use, not um, 12, which is fine. 10 I think is a great number. So glad we found that out. That was interesting. And then let's move over here. And then uh, you can see on these units, it says, and this is the one I'm plugged into, it says CCS or NAX. And then it says coming soon. So my guess is um, there's gonna be some option where there will be a built-in adapter. So you can just put the NAX into the CCS adapter and then plug in, or you can put the CCS into the NAX adapter and then plug into your Tesla. So I think that's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, cool, cool, cool. Uh, it's a really nice um, site here. I did notice there's no trash cans or squeegee, which I, I would at least expect trash cans, um, especially with such a, like a swanky uh, area. but none to be seen i am doing a ev charging state review for the site so that'll be interesting it's got lights I inter i'm interested to see how these lights work out um you can tell so that's a sensor so they'll turn on if someone's here if no one's here they'll turn off and i think the green maybe i'm wrong but i think the green strip shows if they're available let's go look at mine Um, so six. Oh, yep. So here the green turns off. It might be blue. Yeah, it's blue. Um, so that's actually a really nice little touch, Mercedes. I like that. Everybody, real quick, I wanted to come back to the handicap accessible spots, um, which is great that they have it. Um, and I think by law they're supposed to have it. But anyways, um, I think my one wish is that they were labeled as handicap accessible use last. I wish they had that because I really couldn't imagine being someone who would have trouble, um, you know, accessing a charger. Uh, like if they, if they ended up having to use one of these spots over here, I couldn't imagine not being able to access something that'll make it easier for you to plug in and charge your car. So I don't know if Mercedes watches my videos, but if you could come in and add that uh, EV, EV charging, um, handicap accessible spot, use last. Uh, and I think that would be a, a really good um, gesture for for those EV drivers out there. Hey everybody, so um, I actually saw, there was a sign. I didn't see the sign. And uh, there it is, accessible EV charging used last. Uh, but again, it's just like they put it in the worst spot possible because it blocks this cable from coming out at all. But they did, there is a sign. Maybe they should have put a sign here or maybe they should have put a sign on top of the charger or something like that, I'm not sure. Uh, but there was a sign and I feel kind of silly now. I wanted to mention another thing that I thought was an interesting choice. Like I appreciate that they put the CCS and NACs and eventually it won't matter once they have those adapters in. But for right now, when you have a CCS car that has a port on the front left, example for me, I should theoretically, I should have went into this parking spot, right? Um, but then I have to pull the cable 
around to this side um, and it could hit it could be on my hood and that really isn't a great experience so um, once honestly once they get the adapters in there I can't complain much about it but um, I did have to park over here so I didn't have a cable but now this person's gonna have to pull their cable but I guess if a Tesla backs in it won't really be that big of a deal but just some um, interesting I think maybe they should have put the the knacks on um, the like like flip flop them or something like that but again there's gonna be an adapter so I'm really complaining about nothing here so this is now the third site um, I've been to that has these Alpitronic hyperchargers you know why why such a big deal why am I covering these stations why do I think they're important well I think they're important because Alpitronic is in Europe and these things are everywhere and they're super reliable and Alpitronic really really cares about having that reliability and they make sure that they build a strong solid unit additionally for maintenance they make they make the maintenance for these so easy uh, and what happens is they actually train technicians, so technicians know what to do and how to work on these. And they have a whole system where it's really easy to bring, uh, you know, swap out power modules, swap in a new power module, uh, so that they can get the, um, the units up and running again if there is some sort of issue. I don't know if you've been to other stations where just constant issues like Electrify America with um, their Signet units where the power modules fail and then they don't fix them because they didn't have parts. There's part, they've got parts. <laughs> um, if they need to replace something, they can get it, they can get it done, and then they can get the charger up and running. So Alpitronic, watch out. You're gonna start to see these things everywhere. Um, Cause right now, what, what do we got? We got Mercedes Benz who's using them. We've got BP Pulse who's using them. We've got Ayana. So those are three companies. Um, there could potentially be maybe some other companies that are gonna start using these because they see how reliable and easy they are to maintain. So yeah, watch out for Alpitronic, everybody. Um, the experience is pretty good. Um, I will be honest, the best implementation of the software I have seen was at the Travel Center of America. Uh, it worked, it activated the fastest, um, the pay went through, uh, so, and also the, um, the hold on the card was the lowest <laughs> there as well. But yeah, these, these things are awesome. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to check them out, uh, you will soon. Uh, these are going to start showing up at, at new Bucky's. I don't think they're going to use the ChargePoint Express anymore as Mercedes-Benz. I think they're going to go exclusively to Apitronic, but don't hold me on that. Um, but I, I would want to because of how reliable they are. All right, everyone. So I'm going to stop charging here. 17 bucks. Yes, I'm sure. Stopping. And then I'll show how to get the receipt if you have it with the Pater system, which is pretty nice. So there it is. Oh, let me get my, my charging detail average, 110. There it is, and that's pretty normal actually for, sorry about that, that's pretty normal for the Equinox. 34 to 70%, 20 minutes. Um, and then if I want, let's go back. If I want a receipt, I click receipt here. Oh my gosh. Um, Ayana, you need to do that. You need to put it on this screen, not on the Pater terminal. You gotta do it. Uh, so I'm actually gonna stop this and scan it real quick. So I was able to get the receipt. It's a little clumsy. So they use ChargePoint for their back end, um, whereas Travel Centers of America, BP Pulse, and um, Ayana use, I believe, EV Connect for their back end. And so um, while it was on the screen, it was a whole different thing. So basically it takes you to a web page and you have to put in the date, you have to put in how much you were billed for, and you have to put in the last four digit of your credit card and then it gives you a receipt. So that's not great and they need to work on that a little bit in my opinion. Um, but hey, you can get a receipt. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna call that a video, everybody. Really cool checking out this Mercedes-Benz, um, what do they call it? Mercedes-Benz high power charging uh, network site with these awesome Alpitronic units. Again, be on the lookout for Alpitronic. I really think these are gonna start popping up everywhere because of how reliable they are so thanks again for watching if you haven't already please rem remember to give a like a subscribe hit the notification bell and i will catch you all next time